So we're going to look at um, these examples. So let's suppose, first of all, anybody have any peanut allergy? No. All right, good. So we can do these problems. So we're using <laughs> peanut butter M&Ms. All right. So the manufacturer, Mass Foods Company manufactures Same. peanut butter M&Ms. If you go online, you can look up the makeup of a bag or what they say a makeup of a bag of peanut M&Ms should be in the terms of the distribution of colors. So for this problem, 10% each are brown and red, 20% each are yellow, blue, orange, and then the rest of the candies are green. So we'll go ahead and use that information to answer these questions. So if you pick just one peanut butter M&M out of the bag, what's the probability that it is green? Well, we have 10% brown, 10% red, 20% yellow, 20% blue, 20% orange. So 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10 is 80, which leaves 20%. All right, and we can leave our answer like this because percentages are probabilities. What's the probability that it's a primary color? So red, yellow, or, or means add blue, right? So we're looking at what's the probability we get a red, a yellow, or a blue. Okay. 10 plus 20 plus 20 is exactly what we said, 50%. Easy so far? Good. What is the probability that's not orange? So not orange, all we have to do is add up all of everything that's not orange, right? Since orange is 20%, we can also do 1 minus the probability that it is orange. It's the same thing, right? 1 minus 0.2, which is going to get 80%. Which you kind of knew that. We just add up the other ones, we get 80. <clears throat> yeah, now we're going to kick it up a notch. All right? So those are pretty straightforward. Now let's add something to this. What's that? With, with this one here? Yeah. So it's if what's probably it's not orange, so then it's got to be yellow, blue, red, or brown. So you can just add 10, 10, 20, 20, 20. Oops, not that 20. This 20, the green 20. That adds up to 80. So now let's say I pick four M&Ms in a row. What's the probably they're all blue? No, I don't know what's in the bag. So I can't assume there are 10 blues. Now, technically, it does change the probability, but I don't know how it changes. So I can't assume that it's going to change. So I have to just say, OK, well, the percentage is going to stay the same because I don't know what's in the bag. Now, if I knew what's in the bag, then, um, then, I, could, then I would have to change that, right? As long as I didn't put the M&M back, that'd be kind of gross, right? Right? <laughs> no one to do. I didn't see, yeah, I didn't say I looked and then put it back. Okay. So they're all blue. What's the probability that the first one is blue? Remember, we're picking four. What's probably the first one is blue? 0. 0.20. Okay. The first one's blue. The second one is blue. The third one's going to be blue. And the fourth one's going to be red. Oh, not red. Blue, right? You guys are like, oh, what? Blue. So I like to write this as 0.2 raised to the fourth power. Point zero zero sixteen. Now, for this one, I would recommend leaving it as its decimal, just because I know some people get have trouble move, changing it into percent. If you wanted to, you can move the decimal over twice. 
and have 0.16%, that would be okay. But a probability can be a fraction, decimal, or a percent. So if you just leave it like this, that would be correct. What's the probability none of them are green? We're still picking four. Right? Still picking four. So the first one's going to be not green, right? So what's the probability it's not green? 0.8, because I know that the probability that is green is 0.2. So the probability that it's not green is going to be 0.8. So the first one's not green. The second one is not. not green. The third one is not green. And then the last one is not green. Point four zero nine six. Mm -hmm. Trusting. For this one in particular, 41 is okay, but I, I would, I'd like a decimal or two after the percentage. All right, here's, here's where they get fun, guys. At least one is red. Huh? Right? Huh? Okay, that's exactly Well, that would be if, that would be if, okay, wait, say that again. It would be 0.10 for the red. At least one is going to be red. Okay. Red okay. So if you did 0.1, which is red, and the other one's 0.9, then you're telling me that the first one you pick is red and the other three are not. But at least one, I could also have two reds or three reds or four reds. So we'd have to consider all of those options and add all of those up. No, it doesn't do independent. So let's let's just okay. Let's step back for a second. Okay, <laughs> let me step back for a second. If if I have at least one calculator, if there are five calculators, or or I have three pennies here, that's good. Okay, if I have at least one penny then what do I not have? I'm talking about these three right here. Okay, what do I have? I could have, at least one, I could have one of the pennies, I could have two of the pennies, or I could have all three of the pennies. What don't I have? Zero. None of the pennies, right? So if I have at least one, I don't have zero. Is that, do you, does that make sense? Okay, so remember the rule I talked about earlier that for the probability of something to happen is equal to 1 minus the probability of that not happening. So what don't I have if I have at least 1? I don't have 0. So how am I going to do this one? I'm going to say this is 1 minus the probability that none of them are red. Because if I have at least 1, I don't have none. I know. Okay, so then once I get to this point, I'm not going to look at the at least one anymore. I'm just going to calculate the one minus the probability of none. So the probability of none of them being red, that means the first one's not red, the second one's not red, the third, the not red, not red. So 0.9 to the fourth, right? Because the probability of having a red is 0.1. So probably of not having a red is 0.9. I'm going to subtract. Three, nine, is that what you got? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Here's a fun one. If that wasn't fun, no, this one's more fun. If that wasn't fun enough is what I should say. The fourth one, remember I'm picking four. The fourth one is the first one that is brown. What? The fourth one is the first one that's not brown. That is brown. Whew, that would really make it messed up. <laughs> the fourth one is the first one that is brown. So what's the first one? Not brown. What's the probability of getting not brown? 
yeah, let's look back up here. Um, a brown was 10%, so not brown is 90%. So my first one I know is not brown, so I know that's going to be 0.9. Okay? My second one is what? 0.9 because it's not brown. Hey, it's M&M's. Peanut butter M&M's. The third one is... 0.9 because that's not brown. The first one that I get that is brown is the fourth one, 0.1. Order matters in these. Yeah, just because I wanted you. Yeah. 0.0729. Right? Not brown, not brown, not brown. Yay, brown! All right, let's look at a different example here. So suppose I take a bag of M&Ms and I pour it all out on my table and redistribute it to my kids because, you know, kids are like that. They're, he got more blue than I did. I don't want to have any arguments, so I'm just going to put the same amount in each bag. Okay, and uh, each bag is going to have six yellow, six blue, six orange, <coughs> two brown, two red, and four green. Okay. What is the probability that my daughter gets two green M&Ms in her first two candies? And she's going to eat the M&Ms even though she likes to put things back like that. Oh, what do you want for breakfast? A bagel with cream cheese? Here you go. Lick the cream cheese. Leave the bagel. <laughs> Why don't you just say you want cream cheese? I mean, I'll give you just cream cheese. Okay, so let's suppose she eats both candies. So the first candy is going to be green. Yes? Actually, they're both going to be green. So there are four green out of, I need the total number of M&Ms in the bag. Thank you for adding that up, 26. So my first M&M is going to be green. That's four green out of a total of 26. The second M&M is also going to be green. How many green M&Ms do I have left? Three out of 25. All right. So then I'm going to go ahead and throw that guy in my calculator and then estimate that. I'm going to get 0 0.018. Yeah. Four divided by twenty-six. Close the parentheses. Open parentheses. Three divided by twenty-five. Close the parentheses. If you have one of these fancy guys, you can also leave it in, um, it'll give you your answer in fraction form. So that's the answer in fraction form. But I'll take it either way, right? What is the probability that my son loves blue, it's his favorite, what's the probability he doesn't get any blue on his first three candies, and he throws a fit, and I send him to his mom? <laughs> it's not a blue, right? There are six blue, so the first one's 20 over 26. The next one is not. Okay, where did I get that number from? I added up everything to get 26, right? That's the total number of things. There are six blue in here. So how many of those are not blue? 20. I've already picked a not blue out. So now I have one less. I have 19 of them out of 25. And then I've already now picked two not blues, 18 out of 24, which ends up being some nice big fraction. Point four three eight. Uh, that is too high of a probability for me to. I better put more blues in that bag because there's a forty three forty four percent chance he's going to throw a fit. <laughs> Don't like that.
the fractional answer is 57 over 130. And that's okay as well. All right. Any questions? Excellent. So that's it. So, yes. Sorry. Like odds makers and stuff, and they say, oh, you know, one out of five chance of this happening. Yeah. Correlates to percent. Right? Yes. Yeah, and odds are a little bit different than probability. Um, so it, it's it's not desired outcomes out of total. It's I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's just slightly different. My friend was in the class once.